Sri Lanka is going through the worst of economic crisis today. And this, of course, is a learning point to African countries, especially the one that prides itself as the so-called glorified giant of Africa. Yes, today I'm Joquette Solu and etc. And you're welcome to the Cetra's Look family. Yes, thousands of protesters have stormed the residence of the president of Sri Lanka, go to buy a Rajiv Pascal. And what is their demand? They are demanding that the president alongside his prime minister resigns office. And this, of course, he has agreed to do on the 13th of July, 2022. But as of today that I'm doing this presentation, he's yet to file in his resignation letter. And yet, he has fled to Maldives, yes, alongside his wife and co. So, what is happening? <laughs> hey. Ah, the situation is just getting worse so my people. Because right there, the protesters have vowed that they are going to stay put. Do you know the meaning of stay put? They are going nowhere until their demands are met. Because there's shortage of food, total blackout. There are no guards. There are no fuels. There are no medicines. Even the doctors in Colombo are telling people, don't get sick, oh. But ask me, <laughs> is that not funny? When you have situations like this, that thousands of people are killing for gas, there is no food, there is nothing, ah, they're not going to get sick. So that is just what is happening now, my people. And I want to think that this is a very great lesson point to us as Africans, African nations. So let's rewind and go back to how Sri Lanka landed itself in this horrible situation, in this great mess. One thing for sure is that if you don't learn to reduce your spending and borrowing voluntarily, the economic situations and the workings of the economy is going to help you reduce it. So, the problem of Sri Lanka, it has so many facets, yes. One is that they are operating a bad economic system in which it's expanding more than it's having revenue. It's spending more than it's producing. It's importing more than it's exporting. And this has led it towards to deficit our trade balance and what deficit budget balance. And of course, this is a terrible and horrible situation. And I'm going to come back and tell you how they are managing this situation. After having this bad economic situation or policies, they are still operating a lopsided political system, the dynastic political system in which it's only their glorified uh, family, the Rajapaskas family that is ruling and they're putting all their relatives in the prominent positions instead of putting those with right acumen, those that can deliver the, the country from terrible situations like that have the expertise in all the fields that they, they need to correct this. They are not putting those people there. They're just putting their family relatives, a family, family thing. <laughs> and they think they're going to get out of it. Yes, <laughs> that's another challenge that they've gotten into and the challenge in having a single family dominates the whole economy is that if that family is actually filled with dummies they don't know anything about the ruling of the economy that is what they are going to transfer now to the whole economy and the challenge is you cannot fix round pegs in those into square holes and you think it's going to work no go lay she share it's gonna it's not gonna work that is my own language that is it and that is what is happening there and in most African countries, yes. So, the worst of all, to crown it all, is that instead of borrowing from multilateral agencies like IMF, Sri Lanka went to borrow from glorify China. And of course, you know what China can do and what China has been doing across nations of the world, yes. And that is what has led Sri Lanka to the terrible situation it has found itself in now. And before they actually got here, they could have actually mitigated the effect of all this. But instead of having this, their current president, Gotobaya, while he was having his campaign in 2019, actually came out and told them that he's going to do what? Have uh, excessive tax cuts 
for them. And the citizens on the other end voted for him on this premises, on these premises, never asking him how is he going to make money to sustain the economy then. So when he came into power in 2019, he caught their taxes and the agencies were actually complaining that there's still going there's going to be a bankruptcy very soon. He didn't listen. Instead of listening to all that was being said, the solution he did was that he increased their external debt. And this is a warning shot to all African presidents and countries that are always borrowing, thinking that spending is what will keep the economy going. No, there is a time to borrow and there is a time to restrain your spending. Because if you don't restrain it normally, the economy will restrain it for you. They defaulted on over 51 billion US dollars loan. And another move he did was that in April 2021, he placed a ban on the importation of fertilizers. This is another idiotic move. He has crippled the economy. That means there is this rice that is normally their main food there that was produced in, in Sri Lanka. The production fell by 50%. And this led to food shortage. And for the first time for a long time, they were forced to import rice. It was lying on the fertilizers that, that were not good for health. But in the real sense, the people got to know that it was trying to save dollars. Foreign exchange, their foreign reserve was almost getting to ground nothing. Yes. And the next thing was that he placed the ban on luxury goods again. <laughs> so he was just taking actions. And do you know why they, 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 they got to this trend? It's just because they are the only wants ruling which is applicable to what is obtainable in most African countries especially in Nigeria where the right people are not placed into the right positions and you pick somebody that studied Yoruba Yoruba is an African language to be the Minister of Finance in a country so tell me what's the correlation what's the relationship studied language you want to manage the country's finances how is it going to work no it's going to go down the drain that is what is happening so i think african countries especially nigeria should learn from this because <laughs> it just goes like this yes if you don't listen to what the signs all around are saying it's going to come knocking on your door and that is why we should just be wise so this is what this uh, go to buyer has been doing and it's just a fallout of all that his family members in, in previous regimes have been doing. So he just came to crown it all. Another thing that crippled their economy was that the global pandemic brought words, made it impossible for tourists to visit the country, the island, and tourism contributes about 13% of their GDP and it fell. And so did so many other factors. Remittance from abroad also fell. And instead of addressing this, go to buyer, went to borrow from China. He didn't borrow from IMF because he knows that IMF, although they are friendly, uh, they have friendly uh, lending policies, but they are going to make sure that you your policies are in line with what to make sure that you earn more your revenue increases he didn't borrow from them he went to borrow from china of course china will not be concerned about how you're really your economy but when the economy goes into a mess as it is now they will just want to take their money back and they will not be there to help you and this is a learning point to all african countries that are running to china they are increasing their expenditure they are borrowing do you want to use all the generations on bond to borrow you are already selling to something yes yes you're piling up debts for the oncoming generation and you're not even thinking of how to repay these loans and let me tell you china they shine their eyes oh they know they they know they take no for an answer if you understand the pigeon I'm saying, they don't take a no for an answer. And that is just it. And I think Sri Lanka needs help right now. They think, I think they need about 20 billion US dollars to resuscitate their economy. And that's a great learning point. Where are they going to get it from? Because everything is just increasing. Inflation rate is increasing. Uh, insecurity. And every other thing is just increasing. So this is a learning point for us. What one thing can you deduce from it? We should just stop borrowing. We should put the right people into position. We should stop operating a dynastic political system whereby you're just taking people from a particular tribe. Let's say the one in Africa is not just from a family. Now, you're just taking people from a particular tribe 
You're not considering their competence. You're not thinking of maybe they are capable of delivering what to take the economy to the expected position and you're just putting them there. It's not going to work. Ole lo, ole shishe. So let's go back to the drawing table. And I think this is where we're going to draw today. Yes, Genge. Don't forget the joy therapy, Mr. Cetro. And Michael is behind the camera for those of our Cetro's blog, uh, our Cetro's blog lovers. So make sure you don't forget the joy therapy. Yes, catch you. Love you. Bye-bye. Make sure you keep your joy because your joy is actually your strength. Yeah. Bye-bye.